Do you see the steam rising off the coffee? Do you take a time to look around and enjoy the little things in life? Do you recognize that today there's something more than what you can see with your eyes and hear with your ear and understand with your heart? Today, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it for lots of reasons. And one of them for me is the steam off the coffee. When I looked at the camera, and I saw the picture of how the flowers are framed, and how the steam was rising off the coffee, and just how peaceful and quiet it looked. I thought to myself, self? <laughs> Look at that. What a picture of peace. Or at least, contentment. Because when I looked at the empty chair, I thought of Jesus there. And for me, it's just a simple thing, and it's just a little thing. But I thought, wow, wouldn't that be neat to just sit down and have a cup of coffee with Jesus? And then I realized, you know, every day I am having a cup of coffee with Jesus. <laughs> Because not only is this the day the Lord has made, but you see, the day can make me, or I can make me, aware of the day the Lord has made. One or the other. One will change me. The other will allow me to participate in what the Lord has designed the day to be. So it's your choice. You can look at your day as being, oh, what's going to happen today? And what's it going to do to me? Or you could look at it as, wow, what's the Lord going to show me today? And how am I going to respond to it in a positive and, and unique way to see God in it, to know God with it, to be aware that God is in my day because he's in me. And wherever I am, there he is in the midst of it. What a neat thing. What a great realization that you come to when you've been a Christian a long time that you realize the Lord God Almighty, who made the universe, is inside me. Cool. <laughs> what, need, what do you need to fear then? I need fear nothing, for the Lord is with me, because this is the day that him and I are going to rejoice and be glad in. Today, in daily light, the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Not as though I had already attained, either were already made perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of in Christ Jesus. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. We all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from which glory to glory even as the Spirit of the Lord and by the Spirit of God in us. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. For now we see through a glass darkly, then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am known. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. But we shall see him as he is, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. You know, day by day, if you sat down and you made a list of everything that's wrong with yourself, the list would grow. because. The closer you come to God, the more God realizes, or you realize in the Lord, that there are certain things that you want changed that haven't changed. But you know, if you sat down with the same list and wrote down everything God had changed that you didn't realize, you'd be surprised to find how much God has changed you. Because every day that you're alive, God himself, by his Holy Spirit inside you, which you can't see, is changing you on the inside because this outside is going to pass away. You're going to lay it down in the grave and you're going to say thank you for that flesh, but you're going to move on to a spiritual body. 
So God, by his Holy Spirit, is working on you on the inside to make you like his spirit. So one day you'll be like that on the outside. So that just like when you see Jesus in these pictures, oh, that's pretty, look at the blonde hair, or look at the, the image of a hippie, or look at the beard, or look at the, the beatific face that some artist has rendered. But we're told Jesus looks like white hair. And he has a sword of the spirit in his mouth and his eyes flash like fire. We're told that Jesus looks like a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. And he bears his scars even to this day. We're told a lot of things in the book of Revelation that we can see Jesus. And we know that when he appears as a light shining so bright that we are the sons of God right now. But what will we look like? I have a feeling you'll discover that you are a light, just like Jesus said, of the world. And that your light will shine even brighter one day when God reveals himself to you. And in that day, they shall shine as lights in the firmament. <laughs> Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. What will you that I shall do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion to them, and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? I will put my spirit within you, saith the Lord. I will yet for this be inquired of. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we shall have the petitions that we desire of him. Often I've heard it said, You don't get what you want. You get what you need. You know, sometimes God will give you what you want. But you'll find out it wasn't what you need. Because when you're like a little child, sometimes things are put in your crib that keep you quiet while you're growing. And you play with it and enjoy it. And go goo goo ga ga da da over it. But... When you grow to be a man, you put away childish things and you gradually set aside some of the sins that so easily beset you. You set aside the little toys that you played with. You set aside some of the bad habits that you had that you didn't realize that while it's good to go to Sunday school sometimes as a little kid, you know, in church, it's time to move on to become an adult in Sunday school, in church. So in life, likewise, you need to manifest, not just take in. You need to be that light in a situation when the darkness closes in all around and people are panicking and fearful and they don't know what to do. Guess what? You do. That's what growing up is all about in the Lord. You become Jesus to someone else. And that's what God wants for you to become is a light that grows ever brighter in this world that's getting darker and that you are the one who shows the way by what you do. You don't follow the world in its ways. You are the leader of the world in its ways. And the world in its ways will hate what you're doing, but they'll follow along behind you because you have God with you. You have God in you. You have God leading you. So today, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Ask Him to direct you. Ask for His wisdom. But more than that, ask for His Holy Spirit to not just whisper in your ear to turn to the left or right, not just to inspire you which circumstances are right for you, not just to work it out in your day to bless you, but also to be a light to those around you, that in you, ask this, that in you, they might see Jesus.